Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, here talking about something that I want to do earlier in the week, and I obviously did not, and that's talking about the Packers' usage of the pony personnel, their pony package, in uh, the week two of the 2022 season. I actually recorded this already, uh, and then I did not like how it went, and everything went terribly, so we're going to give this another shot. And so we're going to talk about this real quick, and I'm going to go ahead and, and we'll just kind of set this up. So we're going to talk about, first of all, what pony package is, why you use it, and, and kind of the basically what you're trying to get out of it. And then we're going to walk through all 11 of the Packer snaps and Pony Personnel. So what is Pony Personnel? Pony Package is, and I have the personnel groupings up here. Pony Package is essentially, it's it's at least 21 personnel. It could be 21, 22, 23. And as a review, the personnel packages are the first number is the number of running backs. So it means two running backs. Second number is the tight ends. And then the number of wide receivers. You have five skill positions. That's inferred. So uh, 21 personnel would be two running backs, one tight end, two wide receivers. And it, the pony package specifically is uh, those those two have to be running backs. It's not necessarily fullback. You go into 21 personnel and you have a fullback. This is just running backs. So these are our two here. So we've got uh, that's Aaron Jones there and AJ Dillon. So what are we trying to do? What's the overall goal of pony package? The overall goal is uh, is to create an advantage for yourself either in the running game or the passing game. This is going to be very high level. It's going to be relatively simplistic. But we'll say for the passing game. Your goal is to get them to match one of your linebackers. You get them to go heavy because you got two running backs. You can go like with a run heavy looks there offensively. You're trying to get them to replace a defensive back on the field with a linebacker because then you can split out your running back and you've got a linebacker on a, on a running back. You had a mismatch. If you want to run the ball, this is where you're kind of dictating the action there. You're trying to get them to, if they get burned by that or just, you know, based on however they end up, they line up or whatever they want to do. You want to get them to get a linebacker or take a linebacker off the field, replace them with a defensive back, because then you've got a uh, defensive back trying to fit the run. You kind of motion them in. You get the, your heavy look inside because it's the, the main goal of any of this to be multiple is to be able to go spread, be able to run the ball at the same formation. Pony package, you kind of try to dictate personnel usage to the defense, and then you kind of hit them with wherever they're not. Now, it all sounds good in theory. I really like it, um, but it is something that the Packers did not have good luck with against the Bears. They ran Pony Package by my count 11 times, 11 times. Five of those were RPOs. Six of those were not RPOs. Um, and I think what we're going to do, we're going to break these up into RPOs and non-RPOs. I think is the way we're going to do this. I should have figured that out ahead of time, but that's what we're going to do. So when they had an RPO tag on it, they had five plays for 19 yards, which is 3.8 yards per carry. Not great. Three yards per attempt, I guess. When they did not have an RPO, that was six six attempts, six plays, 23 yards, 3.8 yards of carry or yards per attempt. Not good. But the the no RPO tag was technically 3.83. And so if you extend that decimal out, that was slightly more, just slightly better, but not by much, man, not by much. There's one more play to deal with there. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to, I'm going to throw a little filter in here. We're going to start looking at the RPOs first. So we're just going to go ahead and do that because I think, to me, that it it makes a difference because that's how how you're looking at this, how you're counting the run. And so this is this is how we're going to run this. We are going to just kind of look at some of these plays first, and we're going to take a little bit more time with, uh, just because. And then from there, we'll just go to we'll we'll go from there, and we'll and we'll kind of go through these a little quicker. These are our eleven plays, and I do have a tendency to ramble. So we've got pony package. They're not going to have any motion here, and the RPO tag is going to be a bubble tag here to Aaron Jones. Now, the way they typically do this, this is why I'm doing the RPO separate. The way they typically do this, you have the pony package. So you are looking at stuff here, except for the RPOs, it's more about kind of where guys are aligned uh, to the pass game and you decide whether they're on or pass. So the way the Packers usually do this, these two guys block and you got the bubble. So you got one, two, you got three men. Then what you're trying to do is you're trying to create a mismatch with numbers. It's a pre-snap read based on numbers, based on leverage. They don't have it because you got three on three. That's your third. You want to outnumber them. So off the bat, this is not going to be thrown. We know this, but it is going to remove this man. I believe it's him from the fit. Actually, it's going to be his one, two, three. Um, it's going to remove him from the fit because he's going to follow that bubble. So you've got a four man line. I believe that's kind of an edge. So it's a three down line, bat, three down lineman, edge, two linebackers. So, so a six man box. One, two, three, four, five. So it's only five, I guess, but you're removing a guy from there. And so you like the run. To me, the RPOs, it's less about that you like the run and more that you you don't like the numbers in the pass game. And so we'll kind of see how this goes. 
you get this edge kind of this end goes unblocked because you, you're again you're five on six everyone's kind of flowing you're blocking that this guy comes up and ends up making the tackle so it ends up only being a gain of three here but they don't end up a nice uh here, I'll, I'll guess i'll get rid of that we'll say real quick i think it does a nice job here because he's able to kind of lay into this guy and still kind of move there he hits that guy and then it doesn't end up going anywhere but Again, you're not going to throw that because of the RPO look, because of the numbers. You don't have the numbers advantage there. That's the first one. And, we're, and some of this, we'll kind of talk about this specifically to Pony. The RPOs, I think I have a harder time with that just because it is so dependent on, on your look itself, your RPO tag, whatever your passing tag is looking like. So that's the first play. We're going to get this next one now. This next one uh, actually turns out to be pretty nice. Well, it would be pretty nice. So the RPO look is going to be kind of this flat slash stick with Jones, that little stick route, that quick out. And usually the way they all throw this, and you see a lot of receivers do this, is you're looking at the spacing and you're looking at leverage. If this guy has inside leverage, so Jones has like the outside shoulder free on that man, and also there's a little more space there, usually looking like eight to 10 yards of separation, something like that, a lot of times he'll throw that. Because that's you're just trying to, because on this guy here, the guy on the outside is going to run a go. You're clearing the boundary. You're getting that. You just want you're, – you're targeting that guy, essentially. Can I get a few yards out of this? A second and eight. Can, can we have him beat this guy? Now, in the run fit, it's, again, kind of the same thing. Three down with an edge and two linebackers there against one, two, three, four, five, six. So you got hat on a hat. You got six guys here. Now, the problem in this one, he does not throw it. This is a run. In fact, all these RPOs, they decide to run. So we'll just do that up front. Uh, or not up front. Run the second play. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, there's a there's a whiff, and I don't know who to attribute it to. I think there might be a miscommunication here with Josh Myers, which we'll get to in the other one, and it ends up being tackled in the backfield. 90 ends up taking him down. Now, it looks to me like what's happening, and again, this I don't know what exactly is going on based on the alignment. There appears to be a miscommunication. It looks like, so running gets a first, so there's a kick out here. I think uh, double team, they kick. I think, no, Elton climbs. He hits him. Running is able to get up and get that block at the second level. Looks like Myers is going to hook, quick hook, and then move up to the second level, but instead just, just lets him run free. But it looks like to me that Myers is releasing before he even really does anything. You can see him. He's kind of clipping there. I think he's maybe looking for – it's not necessarily a pull. They have to do some pull stuff. Is he looking for a block and he's looping over? I don't know. I don't like to assign blame an offensive line play because I don't know enough about it. All I know is – this man likely should have been blocked. I don't know if that's Myers. I don't know if he's expecting running to crack down or what. And ends up being attacked on the backfield. It's a good call on the run. Again, like you could see him pass on the stick because there, there was a little bit of space there. There was space that they normally throw to. But with hat on a hat blocking up front, you kind of like that run look there. So I don't fault him at all. Now here's where we're getting to some of the fun stuff here um, is with the motion. So this is going to be... The RPO tag I have, I have on this is uh, kind of swing. So you're going to have this. We'll kind of watch on this orbit motion. And he goes over and you get it's almost the same thing as that that wide receiver screen thing we saw before. Only you get him kind of running head of steam. You've gotten don't have numbers over here again. Three with that guy with an open lane. So you get one, two, three against one, two, three. The thing that is very interesting to me, and we'll we'll kind of look because this ends up turning into a six yard run there. The due to the motion, and this is where Pony really helps you out. This is what you're looking for. The numbers change. So right now you have kind of the same look we've seen, right? You got a three, you've got the edge, or you got the four, yeah, three. So it's four up front with the edge, two linebackers. You have this safety here as well. Now over here, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of milling around, they're doing whatever. We're gonna watch how the motion shifts. The so motion shifts. And it looks like the safety is looking to pick him up. He's over here. These guys shift over. Now he's going to orbit back around, and we're going to see how that changes what the Bears end up doing. All right. They shift him. So now you got hat on a hat here. Jones on the swing. You've moved a linebacker out of the run fit. The linebacker is now over there. So your run fit is now three with an edge with a single linebacker. And now you've replaced that linebacker. By that motion, you've moved the safety down here. So now you're running into a box where you've removed a linebacker from the fit because he's now moved over to the running back and you've moved a safety down in there. That's what you want with your run looks. You do that motion, 
I don't know if they saw that on tape. They do this a couple times. They do that motion. They shift guys around. The linebacker ends up out of the box a little bit. He's taking, he's now accounting for the RPO. You move to safety in the fit and you can see exactly. So he's, he's now, I mean, he's, he doesn't follow that, but he's out of the fit and they're running it this way. And who, who is there in the alley? Who's there having to take on Josh Myers in the middle there. That's not a linebacker. That's a safety. Safety gets blocked out by Myers easily. Ends up, you know, getting taken out by Roquan Smith there. But that's what you want. You get that motion. Get that two running back package. You move a linebacker out to the one side. You bring a safety down into the fit. That's an advantageous run look. They end up getting six yards on the run. So I really like that one a lot. This is we got uh, two more RPOs I guess we're looking at. This is going to be kind of a bubble look on after motion. And the same kind of thing. They end up going heavier look here. You can see... See how everything shifts. So we've got, I think, it's kind of same look, three with a one. But you got a linebacker lurking, and then you've got this guy coming down in the box. So it's a little heavier on that, on the on the run, because you've got seven in the box now with that guy lurking there. And what they're going to end up doing, they're going to block, block, bubble on the RPO, same one we saw before, and they're going to do kind of a pull lead on the run, which we'll see better from the end zone lead. Uh, and they end up picking only one yard up on this because they're a little outnumbered in the run game. But you've moved, you know, a lot because it's down. You're still, you still have the three on three, basically. It's the three on three. Well, with, with an extra over there because you're running that way. And then you've got that guy there too. So you're a little outgunned there. This is one where I would have liked to have seen them because it looks to me like you've got the numbers there. You've got two. You've got three. You run in that bubble. This is one it seems like they normally throw. So this one, you know, not not assigning blame, not saying you know who's in the wrong, anything like that. Just based on how they normally throw RPOs, you're running into a heavy box, and you've got numbers over here. And you can see how the you can see how stuff's setting up over here. Set, set. You've got on the bubble. So this is one they normally end up throwing. Don't know why they didn't throw it there. I'm not sure if Roger saw something. He didn't like the angles on it. Maybe he liked the run up front a little better. Uh, but that that ends up going for only one. Uh, and we'll look at the end angle, the end zone angle here as well, because this is something they've been doing a little more often, something I expect them to find some success with in Tampa Bay, is the run look. So instead of a straight inside zone, they're doing this kind of uh, – not, that's not really pit and pull, is it? Yeah, a little bit. Usually you see the linebacker go down, but you're kind of getting this down block and pull around the lead, kind of kind of the modern version of, of the sweep, basically. So you're doing – instead of – you're kind of targeting an area you're running with power as opposed to just the zone look. So we've been seeing them. I think they've run that uh, variation of some of that power stuff, 25% this year up from like 5% last year. And it's only two games, but that's, that's promising. I like that. So this is our last RPO. And we're going to see, it's going to be an inside zone look and it's going to be a flat release on the, on the RPO tag with a, another seven man box. And they're going to run into. So we'll see. And this is one they haven't run very much. It's almost kind of like a Hank concept where you kind of like run there, kind of block down, you release into the flat and they're going to run inside zone. They end up picking up 11 yards, end up being a nice, uh, nice run by Dylan, but it's kind of our same thing. Three, you've got, then you've got these linebackers here and that safety creeping up. So again, you're kind of looking at a seven man box with safety help over there. So this is one. And you got Tunyon kind of splitting back around there. Dare, what's wrong? Where am I from? Um, I'm living in Kentucky, man. Uh, sorry. Uh, so we have got uh, so it's an, this ends up being a nice run by Dylan. They get some nice blocking angles. We'll kind of watch this as it breaks down. So they kind of ignore 55, kind of get the double team there. He climbs the second level, and Dylan is able to make a nice little because he's on block because you get the split action there and Dylan's able to kind of follow that and find a path through. So nice run by Dylan there. Um, again, like I think that it wasn't thrown. I guess we'll go back to that real quick. Cause again, not assigning blame or anything, but just kind of curious on the, uh, on the mix of it all since I'm here and I'm doing this, if he's, if he's open and kind of how, how that works out, how that motion looks, there's a couple of plays this game. Yeah. He ends up getting covered up. They end up taking him out. It's a couple of plays this game. I think where uh, the Packers will probably look at some of the stuff, especially in the pony package and say like, when do we had opportunities there? Um, they're just, they're running some new stuff. So that's, uh, I don't know. That, that one seems fine. They ran it. They got 11 yards off of it, even though it was a heavy box. It was blocked up really well. And the RPO tag was, uh, was, was not open. So zero issues with that. 
All right, we are now going to move to the non-RPO game. The non-RPO game, again, six attempts. There's only one run. The one went for eight yards. We'll go for we'll go with that. 3.8 yards. Uh, this one here, this is the one that really makes you mad just as an offensive, as someone who likes offensive football because it's one of those, it's a beautiful concept, man. And then they just, uh, and they kind of get what they want. It just doesn't quite work out due to protection and a couple other things. So we're going to look here. So you get this motion. You get the motion and with the motion. So we got, so he's going to kind of move over there. Dylan's going to move over there. Safety's kind of communicating. He's coming down here. So that looks like, okay, they're probably going to rotate in a single high, which is exactly what you want. And he's going to kind of come, come down and get the flat, which sets this up perfectly because it's his all go running back seam. I'll go, I'll go half back seam. That guy takes up the boundary. This guy walls off the inside, kind of an in breaker, I guess the way I drew that was bad, which is good against that single high safety because you're tying them up, which means you now have your running back on a linebacker up the field. Now the problem is that the linebacker plays this well. Um, he kind of he he notices it. You can see him kind of getting caught. This was almost a disaster for the Bears. But Rogers is looking at this. He thinks he's got exactly what he wants. He kind of catches himself. He got that walled off. He got that there. Get him up the seam. It's just really nice coverage. And the pocket's really good here. It starts to break down by the time Rogers tries to move. You can see it's kind of it's starting to break down. It, he I don't know that he he doesn't break or he's got this over here. I think the issue is it's starting to break down. We'll look at that because when it happens, it happens real quick. But also this concept, there's if he was able to wait a little bit. Now that guy's kind of lurking underneath, but he's like, well, maybe he's got that open. That's done. That scene that he was looking at's done. He's got the check down. This is done. So some of his options are gone. So that point, okay, initial read's done. I was kind of reading out the concept. It's not there. I if he's gonna move there, he needs to buy more time, and it just isn't there. So again, kind of a uh <sighs> Oh, you get you got they got what they wanted off of that because you've got a safety in the mix. That front is kind of again that three, three. No, that's wrong. No, it's so it's they said four two. So you've got this four there, and you've got the two. So they go heavy with the six. One, two, three, four, five. And you got those two guys back there, but you're moving that safety out of the way, and you're getting Aaron Jones up the seam on linebacker. So you get exactly what you want. It just doesn't quite work out, but. I like this look. This concept as a whole has been somewhat disappointing. Uh, we saw in week one, they kind of ran a different variation of it as opposed to this one because defenses are kind of clouding over this stuff at this point. They see the motion. They're really getting really good at picking it up. Um, so wouldn't be shocked to see some differences there. We'll go from that, which, you know, defense ruined, to a really nice one. I really like this. So a couple different things on this one. This is the touchdown run with A.J. Dillon working as lead blocker. A couple things I really like about this one. The one, Sammy Watkins is looking to block Roquan Smith. He's going to block that out there. Roquan, when they get to that point, kind of bubbles over the top. So Sammy Watkins very well kind of just moves to the next guy. A.J. Dillon is able to get there. You get that jet sweep around the edge and just all the way to glory. Now what we're going to look at is that guy there because he kind of runs. He has to – you force him to run through a whole lot of traffic. There we go. And what they came out with, and this is, you know, in the, in the red zone here, kind of another – is that three – kind of a 3-3, three, three, I think with the edge so you've got those three down the one guy on the edge you got the two linebackers and you're forcing you've got you've got your guy on a defensive back but you're essentially running the ball i mean it's a it's a pass but it's essentially a run you know and you're you're forcing him you see he had to kind of navigate his way through now he's there and you get a block there roquan's going to go over the edge you're going to get a block there and then he's just going to kind of follow him so this was we don't spend a whole lot of time with this one this is really nice um again you kind of get that I guess a bit of a mismatch. You get Jones on that uh, on that corner on the other side, who then has to fight his way through, and he just he can't quite get there. But you've got that extra body on the field. Red zone's always a little little odd anyway, um, as far as what the personnel groupings look like. I love watching AJ Dillon just uh, just destroy there. So that's really very very nice. This next one, this is our oh, this is our only run. This is going to be eight. This is going to be an eight yard gain, and we're going to kind of watch and see. So we were moving, we're going to be running a power to this direction. I think we're going to get a, maybe a pin pull or something. No, I think it just, I think we're just going to pull those guys, but we're going to move this motion forces. I think it's that guy there is going to be the DB and that's going to be the force defender. And then you're going to be running to that direction. Um, so we'll kind of, we'll watch this and we'll, then we'll look through it a little bit and see, okay, that's, that's the force. He's our guy over here. We've got kind of the same look. At three with an edge and two, and then you've got a safety, and the safety is the force, and you've got up front. 
you've got our one, two, three, four, five, six. Now with our two running backs. And they've got six in the box right there with your forces of safety. You can see, and this is one that Jenkins, you see Jenkins, a little bit of the rust. He pulls out. He's got dudes to block. He's looking for a guy to block um, because he's kind of kicking that out. And he just ends up doing, doesn't do anything, but it ends up, uh, ends up nicely anyway. So look at this. All right, we'll run it from the beginning. I'm going to hand off there. Jenkins is doesn't do anything. And he could get five. It looks like he can get five because that's that's the – okay, so that's the four. So we talked about him. They motion him over. Now, what should be happening is that I believe – anyway, again, hate to make declarative statements. Elton Jenkins, kick. And then you've got it, man. You've got it. This guy's screaming down. We've got Jones in space. Kind of kick there. Jenkins doesn't do that. He turns around to see where he's, where he's supposed to be, doesn't see anything, ends up not blocking anyone. Jones makes a nice cut, kicks it back up, ends up picking up eight yards in that power look. But yeah, that's what you want. You're putting, you know, you're you're running to that side. When that guy moves over, all right, we've got this guy over here in a big motion, a big, big, uh, big place, and we're kicking power. So we're attacking that side with Jones. They're going to run Dylan out that side. That's the matchup you want. Got that safety down there, trying in a, in a big spot down there, trying to kind of force that back in, and ultimately he does. I mean, the the block, you know, Elton Jenkins does not see him, uh, so he does force that back inside, but is not able to make the tackle. That's what you're looking for, right there, man. With that, you, you again hunting mismatches, hunting mismatches. So we're gonna look at uh, this next one. This ends up being, I believe, incomplete through no fault of anyone really, uh, but let's see what we got. So we've got a motion. With six, so that's a DB right there, and they end up shifting back over. So again, you've got now, you've got you've got a, a pretty good little. You're moving guys around. You're you're doing some motion. We're gonna look at this guy here. See, he moves linebackers bump. He's coming over, orbit motion back over. And you've and you've you've moved that guy, so he's now over to this side. Kind of put him in a position. You basically navigated him where you want him. You're going to run a scissor concept here, so that's kind of a post corner. And there's not really anything there. This ends up being covered up. You know, he's kind of falling back into coverage there. You've got him camping out over there. But what he's doing, then he reads and he goes down to Dylan. And this is one. I don't know if something happens to Rogers. We'll keep an eye on him. He misses Dylan. There's an ocean of room out here, man. Just an entire ocean of room. So he misses him. He falls down. Rogers kind of, I don't know, he's holding his hand. He's looking down his foot, something. I don't know if he didn't get hit. The ball didn't get tipped. I've watched this a thousand times at this point. Um, but I don't know if something happened, if if he was trying to pull it down because maybe he saw someone that, that wasn't there or something. I don't know what was going on or if he slightly hurt himself. Um, but either way, ball goes into the ground and it's not great, but you've got, again, so you've moved this guy over here. You also have the linebacker here. Who's then going to be on Jones in the flat. So you've kind of, you've manipulated this guy into moving over here and you've also got a matchup with Jones in the flat against the linebacker ultimately does not go there, but you've, you've got, you've got some of that. You didn't go there cause he's got Dylan and then he just misses Dylan. We've got two more here. We're going to look at, so this is going to be against a, with a three, yeah, you got that guy there. You got those, same kind of look that they've been giving. You motion them out, and here we go. That's that's exactly what you want here. So you're going to run this little. We'll talk about that, I guess. And he kind of gets them out there. You kind of like to see almost like that in space, but you've got this. Uh, oh, let's run it back all the way as I as I continue to ramble. The motion. You've got the 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 way the defense is. You've got the two guys over here. You've got an end, and you've got this linebacker, and you've got these two high. So when you motion him out, the linebacker has to pick him up. You can see that based on structure. Unless they're going to walk that safety down, in which case then, even if they walk that safety down, which they're not, because it looks like they're kind of they're doing that over here. If you walk that safety down at the time, they're telegraphing what they're doing because they're trying to they're they're staying at too high. They're looking too high. You've at the, what you've done by motioning is you're either getting your line of the linebacker on your running back, which is good, or you're getting them to, to or leaving him uncovered if they try to like fake something after the fact and it's not there, or you're trying to get them to declare. 
if the if, so you've either got a linebacker or you've got the safety walk down and then you know you've got single high and that that gives you some information there as it is you get aaron jones on a linebacker he ends up running like this little slant they end up uh running kind of a dragon route over there rogers throws high and late and ends up being incomplete but that it's a good look i mean again kind of the information you can get the mismatch you can get from doing that i think uh i i like that even if it ends up being incomplete our last one we're going to look at this is a call i really really like so again we're going to look at uh same look at three or two so it's, you got a light box you've got the two backs back here your pony package guys the guys you like in your pony package Roger's kind of looking. Can't remember if they motion anyone. They motion. You've removed a man from the fit. This guy is now out. You've got a block and a block. And what they're going to do, and you can see why they don't throw this in a second. So they motion, they get Dylan out. So what they're going to do is they got a wide receiver screen option over here. Then you're also going to have a running back option to Aaron Jones over here. Now, so you've got, like I said, with the RPOs, hat in the hat, you count your numbers. You'll see based on the splits within coming. This guy has a free lane, and we'll see the better from the other angle. He's got a free lane to come through there. Roger sees that and doesn't end up throwing it. And so he ends up coming over on the screen. Jones makes a guy miss. Watch, it's uh, this guy here. Safety coming down. Jones makes a nice step back, makes a man miss. Oh, and there he goes. He's got 15 yards. Now, this is one when I said earlier that, they, that there's some things in the game that maybe they would uh, – Maybe they could use take going forward a little bit. This is one of them here, I think, because what you've done again, you've kind of you've got this box look here with kind of the same we've been seeing the down lineman, the edge. So you've got six on one, two, three, four, five. So you got okay, you're a bit overmatched there. They've got they're outnumbering you because you got the two running backs in the backfield. You motion a guy out, you see him following. You see him following. That's not what I want to do. You want to do when you see him follow now. So we'll we'll, we'll X him out because he leaves when Dylan goes one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. They end up calling the screen. That's fine. But this is definitely one where you can kind of see maybe the next matchup or something. Hey, when we when we do this, they've got this look. We can, you know, we might be able to do something there. Again, this is all hindsight, and I don't hate the call because they end up they end up doing something with it. But there is an unblocked man. Um that Jones has to make miss, but you do with that motion. Again, you had six on five, you removed a man from the box and now you, uh, and now you've got a light box. So, again, I don't know if I did, I still don't know if I did the best job here, man. I'll be honest with you. I'm trying to convey exactly what I'm trying to say with the pony package stuff. I feel, I feel like I'm not doing great. So I guess we'll see what you guys think. I think overall, and we'll hide this and we'll kind of wrap it up. I think overall, Monk got the Packers pony package. It wasn't great. Again, RPO, non-RPO didn't matter. 3.8 yards per attempt uh, in your 11 snaps. That's not exactly what I would hope for. It's not, I'm sure, what the Packers hope for. You hope for for more out of that. They did get the touchdown out of that. They got a couple nice plays out of it. Not quite what you would hope, not what you would expect. But I think there's enough good stuff out there. I think you could see them kind of toying with this. You could see some of the mismatches they were able to create. You could see how they are able to mess with the box, mess, mess with some of the leverage on this that I do think even though the numbers were not great, uh, in week two, which was kind of their grand return to pony package. Again, they ran it 2% of the time last year. I think they ran it 10% uh, of the time two years ago. And so, you know, this 13, 16%, whatever it was today, if that's the norm going forward with these two guys, even though I think in week two did not go particularly well, I think enough stuff is there that it still can be an effective package for them, uh, provided they decide to keep running it. So, I hope you learned something I, as I stumbled around. I, I, I hope this was this was nice. I know I learned some things as I was doing this. I went through this stuff a whole bunch of times. Oh, look at that. So hopefully this wasn't a complete disaster and perhaps we'll try it again next week. Uh, until then, I guess I will. I don't know. Until then, I'll talk to you then. That's not a good way to sign off. I don't know. Bye.